Hi, this is Wasabi. Hope you're doing well. And if you ever wonder why games don't launch on Steam if you're a PC gamer, there's a good reason for it. First reason is being because Epic Games decides to throw their weights around. They want to throw money bags and say, hey, go on our store. I'm only our store. Fuck Steam. We don't think there's a good competitor. And we're clearly the better option because we paid you to be on our store. And the second option is because if you go to Steam, then you have a good chance, depending on how shitty your game is, you might get hit with uh, review bombs. You get hit with people to say your game is the biggest pile of dog shit known to mankind. And that's what's happening with Overwatch 2 right now on its launch on Steam. It has been... uh interesting to say the least so this is the launch page for overwatch on steam as you can sit there and see all reviews is overwhelmingly negative at nine percent <laughs> you can't make this shit up yeah you can tell that people are really disappointed in this game now of course you can sit there and make the quick argument well you know what people are gonna sit there and troll they're gonna sit there and say a lot of shit just to fuck with the ratings they want to see the negative so of course people are all gonna come together and meme and troll but I say this, if the game was genuinely good and people were enjoying it, then people wouldn't have a reason to mass spam and try and give a bunch of troll responses in the hopes that, you know, they can lower the rating down. Sure, there's going to be people who want to do it for shits and giggles, but realistically, this game isn't the same game that it used to be. And this comes from someone who actually bought Overwatch on launch day. And for some reason, if you doubt me, I still got this bad boy right here, the launch edition for the PC box, Overwatch Origins Edition. I was super fucking excited when this game came out and I put so many fucking hours into this shit just for it to be uh, destroyed, tarnished, um, replaced with, in my opinion, an inferior copy, especially all under the guise of, hey, we got this PVE mode coming soon. You guys are going to love it. We're working really hard on it just for them to say, <laughs> psych we have scrapped it now if you go through some of the reviews this is what you got people saying this game has been review bomb and i've seen backlash from others saying how it's unfair let me tell you firsthand that no it is not in my opinion this is more deserved for what blizzard has done as someone who has played hundreds of hours in both overwatch and 2 i have a good idea of what's going on and then i mean that's really what it boils down this is pretty much this entire situation in a nutshell not for all the players who leave reviews but let's be honest for a good majority this i think is true the user says this is the result of an extremely passionate group of people who have time and time again been let down by blizzard people who have committed countless hours to playing watch it and consuming overwatch content over the years and the thing is if you're a big blizzard fan then this actually hits home for you if you saw diablo 4 when it launched everyone was excited like oh my god blizzard fucking nailed it they did the greatest game ever and then they dropped one of the worst patches known to mankind and then they had to rectify that immediately pretty much say hey guys we won't do this shit again we've we're sorry we fucked up here big time even though they have fucked up time and time and time and time again in the past and realistically no one should be surprised but people somehow still get the little shock pikachu surprise face every time a bad decision does happen another review someone put it's a big mistake coming to steam now you have the whole community critiquing your game accurately for all steam users to see and that is a big thing i know a lot of people like to shit on steam reviews and sit there and say well you know what there's a lot of shit reviews in there that are trash or like one worded responses but when you sift through them and there's options to that, there's actually ways to filter out reviews. You can find ones that are legitimately written and give you pros and cons, and they're not there just to be for memes. They actually have a purpose and you can actually get some in real insight whether or not the game is worth playing or if you need to go on YouTube and look at gameplay yourself. I've actually used it a lot whenever it comes to looking at games because I want to see if there's any issues with it that might not be present in a video, or I just don't want to look up a YouTube video. I just want to see, get to the quick uh, brass and tacks, and I can sit there and look at right here, 5.6 hours, 0 0.3 hours, obviously just for Overwatch, so it doesn't really matter as much because you could have played it on Battle.net, but you get the point. You can sit there and see how many hours someone has played for a game, and it gives you an idea if it's worth your time or your investment playing the game itself but going back to what they're saying it is true when you sit there and you launch your game on steam if it's a pile of dog shit and it's actually bad do you're kind of fucked because you're gonna have players call that shit out in the review section in a heartbeat and as a developer your only option is to either clap back or just do nothing at all and if you clap back guess what that's just gonna go all over the internet and it's not gonna be a good look that's why if you go to the epic game store it's so last i recall there are no reviews yeah so if you go to the epic game store let's say for assassin's creed valhalla you can sit there and say 4.6 out of 5 stars now, does that really mean much? No, you can't even sit there and see what the reviews are because the only reviews you do get are things like this. You get Metacritic uh, scores. Uh, I think that's really all these. Oh, Open Critic. Those are really your only real reviews you get to see a game other than actually seeing it from users themselves who do own the game. So whether or not you put any merit into reviews like this, this is a personal preference, it's up to you. But personally, I tend to put more faith and trust into reviews like this as long as you know what to look for when it comes to sifting through reviews. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's all this shit right here. It's just so I think of this shit. But this is the best one, in my opinion. This is the highlight of it all. The people who make Overwatch porn work harder than the people who make Overwatch. And that is the truest opinion known to mankind. If you have played Overwatch from the beginning, then you know that Overwatch has a really strong porn community. There is so much porn for this game. It's, there's so much porn for this game, you wouldn't even know where to start. Anyways, I've seen a lot of discussion as well, too. People like to point out the actual concurrent uh, users for this game. If you look at Steam charts for Overwatch 2, it started off pretty strong and people were like, oh my God, see, you know, yeah, this game has a lot of shit reviews, but Blizzard only cares about how many people are playing it. And they're like, this game launched with so many players, this shit's starting off strong. You know, this is uh, hype and amazing. You know what I say to you? Look at this dog, 26,000. Oh, wow. 71,000 peak or 71,000 and 24 hour peak, 75K and an all time peak. And the reason why I laughed at seeing those type of arguments made is because typically when something new comes out, no matter what, people are going to try it for themselves. Whether the buzz is good or bad, people are gonna wanna try it out, myself included. If a game has negative publicity, I don't give a fuck. If it's free, I'm gonna try it out. So when the game first came out, everyone's gonna try it. But this number, I he's either it's going to stay around 26,000 and it's going to drop. I don't see this 21,000 or I don't see the 71,000 peak ever coming back. There's no shot. And so when you compare this to other free to play games, that's pretty doo doo. That's pretty shit. Here's some of your top games right now. Baldur's Gate still rocking. 654,000 right now. Dota 2 free to play, free to play, free to play. You got all these other free to play games that are currently shitting on Overwatch here. Now, granted, I understand the same argument that, hey, it's on the battle net. So probably a lot of players are playing there. But I know a lot of people wanted to make the discussion of, oh, well, look here, 71,000 players. This shit's fucking high. This game is fucking killing it on Steam. And again, it's only temporarily. People want to try it out, see if it's good, see if it's dope. And then they realize it's dog shit and then they don't want to play it no more. But yeah, I just want to talk about this because I found this launch to be very intriguing to watch. On top of that, they had the new Invasion launch, the $15 DLC. I checked the entire playthrough on YouTube and I saw that it was like an hour and 30 minutes tops. So pretty much you pay 15 bucks for events or missions that they've given out for free in the past. And it's not really anything special. People have been like, oh my God, well, they have this one little new feature inside here. You could do something with your arm where you could pull it off or do some like really small minute shit that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things because the same gameplay loop is still there there's nothing really like crazy or mind-blowing i think the cinematics look great but at the end of the day you want to pay for the gameplay experience you want something that you can go to and have fun not just watch cutscenes all day and that'd be literally the only good thing you could do which you can just go watch on youtube instead of paying <laughs> to watch it to be honest it does hurt deep down to see this game just continue to go down the shitter i'm not one of those people that want to hate on overwatch and be like oh man this shit fuck it sucks i'm so glad it sucks no why would i again i bought this shit i paid money for it i've invested a lot of time i even bought loot boxes back in the day I, I don't give a fuck if you think that's shameful yes i don't like loot boxes like the next person but at the time when it came out i was feeling the hype like nobody else so yes i'm part of the problem even though i do criticize it call me a hypocrite but the point is i did enjoy the game for a very long time and i really wanted more content to come out for it but then when they took their hiatus and then they finally came back with overwatch 2 and said overwatch 1 is donezo and then they just kind of haven't really done anything that's worthwhile and the changes in my opinion weren't that great to begin with personally in my opinion if a game is doing well then it would not launch a steam especially if it's been exclusive to the battle net for such a long time i think of the steam release as like a nuclear red button they're like oh, do we do we push it do we, it's like that meme where the guy's like looking do i push this one do i push this one do i keep it on battle net do i keep it do i release it on steam that's pretty much the release of overwatch it's kind of like a last option to try and get their concurrent player base numbers up now whether or not this move is worth in the long run i couldn't tell you only time will tell but yeah i did want to talk about this because i did find the launch to be extremely funny and just kind of see everyone's reactions to this knowing that yeah this game fucking sucks yeah we all saw it going to get review bombed on steam but it is kind of justified because the game isn't that great. But yeah, that's all I got for you. Bye-bye.